The purpose of this video is to provide compliance assistance to testers when conducting TP96-1, otherwise known as the 10-inch pressure decay test. Required supplemental procedures when conducting the pressure decay test can be found in the executive order, while test sequencing and additional district requirements can be found in the applicable permit attachment. As always, the vapor recovery system and components must be tested in a certified configuration except as required by the test procedure. As with any test, the tester should first ensure their test equipment meets all of the requirements as specified in the test procedure. Also before beginning, the tester ensures the following prerequisites are met. There should not be any bulk deliveries within 8 hours of testing. Bulk deliveries are considered to be deliveries of 5 gallons or more, including drops from portable test tanks. Additionally, there should be no vapor to liquid or liquid removal testing 24 hours prior to a pressure decay test. Here, the tester is obtaining a Vita root printout that will indicate when the last bulk drop occurred and tank ologies. Tank ologies or vapor space determines the duration of the test. Specifically, whether a 5, 10, or 15 minute test will be conducted. For manifolded tanks, the combined ullage of all tanks is calculated to determine test times and allowable decay rates. At no time shall the total ullage exceed 30,000 gallons. A minimum ullage of 15% must be met in each storage tank regardless of any manifolding. For tanks less than 1,000 gallons, the ullage can be no less than 300 gallons. Secondly, there shall be no fueling within 30 minutes of testing. This is typically determined by the tester from the time he or she first arrives on site and the time he or she begins the first step in the procedure. As PV valves crack or open under 10 inches of water column, the valves must be removed and the vent risers capped prior to beginning the test. Additional requirements are the submersible fuel pumps be turned off and phase one adapter caps removed. During this test, the executive order for the system requires all clean air separator or vapor processor valves to be closed. When conducting the 10 inch test, the tester has the option of introducing nitrogen through the vent pipe or vapor adapter. If the tester introduces nitrogen through the vapor adapter, the tester must first leak check the vapor coupler test assembly per TP201.3. During this test, the tester chose to introduce nitrogen to the vapor adapter and leak checks the vapor coupler test assembly. He performs the leak check by pressurizing the vapor coupler test assembly to 2.00 inches water column and times the decay rate for one minute. If the pressure at one minute is 0.25 inches water column or greater, the vapor coupler test assembly is leak tight. Once the vapor adapter test assembly is leak tight, the tester is now ready to introduce nitrogen. Here, the tester has chosen to introduce nitrogen at the vent pipe instead of the vapor adapter. The tester must ensure nitrogen is introduced at the required flow rate of between 1 and 5 cubic feet per minute. The tester continues to introduce nitrogen until the pressure reaches 11 inches water column. If 11 inches water column cannot be achieved, the test fails. Once 11 inches water column is achieved, the tester must wait 10 minutes to allow for thermal stabilization or settling. During this 10 minute settling time, the tester can look for leaks of test equipment only which is usually done with soapy water solution. Please be aware that only testing equipment can be checked for leaks and no troubleshooting or leak checks of system components is allowed. After the 10 minute settling time, the tester reduces or raises the pressure to within a range of 10.0 to 10.04 inches water column and begins timing the decay rate. Pressure measurements are then recorded every minute to the nearest hundredth of an inch water column. As final decay rates are specified to the nearest tenth, rounding is done only after calculating the overall pressure decay rate. For example, if the final decay is 0.14 inches water column, the final decay value must be rounded 
to 0 0.1 inches water column. If the final decay is 0 0.15 inches water column, the final decay value should be rounded to 0 0.2 inches water column. In this example, an allowable decay rate of 0 0.1 inches water column would be met in the first example, but not in the second example. At this time, and only when required by the district, the tester should perform a tank tie test prior to reinstalling the PV valve. With the pressure manometer still connected and the tank pressurized, the tester depresses the vapor poppets of each tank. After each poppet is depressed, the tester looks for a corresponding decrease as indicated per the pressure manometer. If there is no corresponding decrease in pressure when the poppet is depressed, the tank is not manifolded and fails the tank tie test. After the tank tie test, the tester is now ready to reinstall the PV valves using pipe sealant or Teflon tape. Please be reminded the PV valves must be installed at the torque ranges specified in the applicable executive order. This particular PV valve was a Husky 5885 and has a torque setting of 20 to 50 foot-pounds. The tester here, as you can see, has reinstalled the valve at a torque setting within the required range. Lastly, the tester must ensure all ball valves on the clean air separator or other vapor processors are returned to the position and locked as specified in the applicable executive order. No testing can be conducted within 8 hours of a bulk delivery or 24 hours of a vapor to liquid or liquid removal testing. Other compliance reminders are to ensure nitrogen flow rates are between 1 and 5 CFM and submersible fuel pumps are off during testing. Although not addressed during this video, TP201.3, the 2 inch pressure decay test, can only be conducted between sundown and 30 minutes after sunrise. The test shown in this video, TP96-1, however, can be conducted at any time of the day. This video gave an overview of the 10 inch pressure decay test as it applies to underground storage tanks. Testers should be aware that when testing above ground storage tanks and using TP96-1, the allowable decay is always 0 0.1 inches water column for 15 minutes regardless of ullage. Testers should also be aware when testing above ground storage tanks the ullage must be at least 15% of the tank's capacity and no less than 300 gallons for tanks under 1,000 gallons capacity.